Hello, Vinyl community, and welcome back to Mike's Vinyl Experience. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. Today, I've got a really fun video that I want to share with you. It is the review of the Eagles' sixth studio album, The Long Run. This is the Mobile Fidelity one-step version that just came out maybe a couple of weeks ago. We did an unboxing on this just a few days ago, and now I think we're prepared to talk a little bit about the music and most certainly the sound. Uh, as indicated, this is the sixth uh, studio album, uh, the last studio album on Asylum Records that the Eagles did. In fact, really, they broke up right after uh, this album was done. Uh, but uh, anyway, sixth studio album, one of their great albums. I love it. Not 100% sure if it's my ultimate favorite. Uh, one of these nights or Hotel California would probably be one of my favorites. But uh, I've got the entire collection, as you can see here. Uh, we've got them all. And so this completes uh, the uh, Mobile Fidelity uh, remaster and repressing of these six great albums. I don't think there's any more that they're going to be doing. Uh, they've only mentioned the six studio albums, so uh, this would be the last of that. Uh, this is a limited edition run of 10,000 copies. Um, this is really true to form, what they've done with the rest of the uh, albums that they've done of the Eagles. They take the original uh, quarter-inch uh, master tape, copy that directly to DSD-256, and then they take that to their analog console, and then, of course, to to lathe. Uh, they do, this, this album here does have their Super Vinyl, which is a huge plus because I think Super Vinyl is one of the quietest vinyls that there is out there today. Uh, anyway, so we're going to talk a little bit about this. We're going to talk about the sound. We're going to talk about the music. Uh, I'm going to go through each, well, not all of the cuts on the album, but pretty darn close and talk about how they sound. And then we're going to do a short comparison to an original 1979 uh, pressing uh, that I have as well. I'm gonna do a quick little comparison with uh, Mobile Fidelity's own SACD uh, version of this album. So we'll, we'll talk about that. But before we jump into that, let's just kind of talk a little bit about the group. The group took on a little bit of a different look with this album as Randy Meisner had left the band and Timothy B. Schmidt took over uh, playing bass uh, when Randy uh, left the band. And so that's kind of the big change on the album. So we have Glenn Fry, Don Henley, um, Don Felder, Timothy B. Schmidt, and Joe Walsh really made up the group. Uh, the Eagles. Now on this album, they did have some additional assistance uh, on uh, Bob Seeger was on backing vocals on Heartache Tonight uh, and Joe Vitale played the piano and electric piano. David Sanborn played the alto sax on Sad Cafe. Sad Cafe I think is one of the great songs on this album by the way. Uh, and then uh, Jimmy Buffett was backing vocals on the Greeks don't want no freaks. Uh, so there was some pretty good, you know, supporting help there on this album. Uh, but like I say, that was that was that was the Eagles at that time. Now I didn't see this tour uh, when they were touring for the long run. I did see the Hotel California uh, tour. I believe I saw that in '78 uh, and saw them. And I've seen the Eagles in concert uh, since then a lot. Uh, in fact, anytime they came close, uh, we've seen them. We ran down to Vegas and saw them about three years ago during the Hotel California uh, 50th anniversary tour that they were doing. What a phenomenal tour that was. Uh, anyway, that, that might be my favorite album, uh, including one of these nights. Uh, but anyway, this is a great album as well. But anyway, that was the Eagles at the time this was done. And Timothy B. Schmidt being a new member, he was a member of POCO. And I don't know if you've, uh, you, I'm sure a lot of you have heard POCO. Uh, their album, Legend, it's got Boomerang on it and two or three other songs that I know that were hits. 
that was a great album from Pogba. Anyway, Timothy B. Schmidt now with the Eagles on this album. Uh, he comes in. He comes in and he sings. Uh, I can't tell you why. I love his voice. Timothy B. Schmidt's voice is amazing, in my opinion. I think he was a major, huge addition to the Eagles, uh, in particular on this album and moving forward. He's still with them today and tours with them. Uh, at least the last time we saw them, just a, a year or two ago, uh, he, was, he was with them. Uh, so Timothy B. Schmidt, new member of the band for this album. So let's get into the sound. How does this album sound? What has Mobile Fidelity done? And have they really done a great job on this album? As I believe they have done on the previous five Eagles album, which are here. I think each one of those was a, 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 a very good job that they did, much better than the original pressings, uh, at least in my own opinion, and this review as well as all of my reviews that I do are going to be basically just that, my opinion. Uh, so anyway, there you go. Kind of take it for what it's worth. I've listed the uh, sound system that I'm evaluating this on in the description below, as I do always. So you can kind of take a peek at that. Um, but anyway, as, as indicated before, uh, this does has a 256 digital step in it. So there is that, and I know that's been kind of a, a tough thing for a lot of us to swallow, but you know, I'm over it. I understand it. I get it. It doesn't remain, it, it doesn't change the fact anyway, excuse me, that the albums still sound great. I think Mobile Fidelity has done a very nice job, uh, in particular with the Eagles series that they've done. I think they have sound great. This album sounds very nice as well. And we'll talk a little bit about that a little bit more in depth when we get into the comparison with the original album. But let me just kind of talk a little bit about, it, it's as indicated, super vinyl, dual 45 RPM albums. So that in itself uh, provides a really unique uh, formula, I think, for success. Uh, super vinyl because it's really, really quiet. Noise floor is very quiet. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about that when we get into the comparison a little bit more, maybe a little bit more in depth, but but very, very quiet album. Of course, 45 RPM it really does help as well. And I think that's one of the things that I noticed as listening to this album is uh, a little bit cleaner vinyl, uh, low noise floor. I think it sounds really, 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 really nice. Let me kind of tell you a little bit about the songs uh, what I found as I went through listening to this album intently, let me kind of tell you a little bit about what I felt and the notes that I took as I listened to this album. I probably went through and listened to this album maybe six times now. I really, to be honest with you, I've really kind of struggled a little bit with this review. And I'll kind of save that for here in a minute and tell you why. But uh, anyway, let me tell you a little bit about the songs on the album and my impressions on how they sound. Uh, on side one, The Long Run, uh, which is probably one of the most popular songs on the album, along with I Can't Tell You Why and Heartache Tonight. Those are the three really big, big songs. And they're good songs for sure, but they're not my favorite. Uh, but anyway, The Long Run, uh, as indicated, vinyl is quite clear. Uh, drums are better defined with a little more snap to them uh, than they do on the original pressing. And I'm gonna talk more about that original pressing here in just a minute, but I'm just gonna give you these impressions on the songs. Moving on to I Can't Tell You Why. Once again, Timothy B. Schmidt's voice is primo. I, I, I just, I love his voice. I think he was such a huge addition to the Eagles and this song is just uh, is just wonder. His voice is just smooth, very well balanced with the instruments. Uh, bottom end on this cut is a little bit more powerful than is on the original. Uh, not overdone, but just a little bit more powerful, maybe a, a titch uh, better defined. Guitars are really, really clean. In the City, another fantastic song. Uh, Guitars are clean. Joe Walsh's voice is really clean and extended. 
as far as Joe Walsh's voice gets. <laughs> and I love his voice. He, in concert, Joe Walsh is, and I shouldn't say this, but, but to me, Joe Walsh is really the star because they play when they have their, when they do concerts, they play quite a few of his own stuff that he did while he did his solo career. And he is just, he's, he's awesome. And, and what a great guitar player for sure. Uh, but anyway, he just sounds really, really, really good on In the City. Uh, dram, drums and percussion are very well defined. Moving over to side two, Disco Strangler. The guitars are great. Hen, Hen, Don Henley's voice is very powerful on this. Quite a bit more pronounced, if you will, pronounced, if that's the right word, uh, than maybe a titch, maybe a titch better than on the original. Uh, King of Hollywood, Henley and Fry's voices are perfect. I think they sound absolutely wonderful. Guitars are sharp and detailed and very clear. Drums nice and very extended. I do love this song. This is one of my favorite songs, King of Hollywood. It's probably not quite my favorite song on the, on the album, but it's one of my top uh, uh, favorite songs on the album. Moving on to side three, Heartache Tonight. Great song, popular as I'll get out. Uh, Fry's voice sounds great. Drums are rendered with proper weight without being overly overemphasized. And I know I've talked about this at times. Sometimes Mobile Fidelity has a tendency to bring out and ex maybe bring forward that bottom end a little bit more than really was meant to be initially. Not so on this one. I think they did a great job with that. This song is great. Anyway, Heartache Tonight. Overall, just a great sounding cut. Uh, those Shoes. This is one of my top three. Uh, along, uh, uh, along with King of Hollywood. Uh, those Shoes are, that's a great song. Those Shoes are just wonderful. This is a great song. Fry's voice is clean. Walsall's talk box sounds incredible. Uh, drums are excellent. Very accurate. No hint of exaggeration on the bottom end. And I guess the reason I'm saying that a lot is because, as indicated, I think at times, sometimes that bottom end gets pushed forward. Not the case on this at all. It, it really didn't. Over on to side four, Teenage Jail. Uh, good overall presentation. Guitar solo and bass guitar are very detailed and very clean. And towards the end of the song, you can really tell uh, that with the guitar solo and the bass guitar. Uh, it, it they're both sounds great. Uh, the Greeks Don't Want No Freaks, it sounds good. Probably not my favorite song on the album. Uh, Sad Cafe, this is the third song on the album that I think is great. Uh, Fry's voice is extremely nice. David Sanborn's alto sax towards the end of the song is clean and, and very extended. Uh, overall, I would say the sound on this album is very good. I think they've done a nice job uh, with this album, has mobile fidelity. Um, I think it sounds very, very good. And, and, and I hate to be a, a harp on something that I always seem to be harping on, and that is the quietness of the vinyl. This is really huge in helping these albums sound their very best, in my opinion. I'm sure that the remastering, the remixing, whatever it is that they're doing, uh, has a huge part of that as well. Uh, and the 45 RPM speed is, 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 is a good part of that too. But the super, super vinyl quietness, I think, is really good. Now, getting on to the comparison. Um, this is my original copy uh, from 1979. It's in very good shape. I should say it's in excellent shape. Um, this is an original, it was indicated 1979, Asylum Pressing of the album. Uh, here is side one. And flipping over, and you have side two. I don't know if you can see that or if it makes any difference to you. My copy of this album is, I would probably classify this very good plus plus. There's no snaps, crackle, or pop. In fact, as I did the comparison with the Mobile Fidelity One Step and this original pressing, I took, I took a day, a complete day going back and forth. Let me tell you why. The differences are not huge. Uh, and I, I was really thinking 
that might be just a little bit different because these, in my opinion, were quite superior to the original pressings. The original master recording and one step of the long run is better than the original, but not by leaps and bounds. Here's where I wanted to talk to you about, and I think we talked about this just a titch earlier, and I fill in a little bit more information on this, is the super vinyl. The noise floor, this is where I think it really makes a huge difference. And, and, and let me tell you why. Crank it up, turn the volume up. That is where, in my opinion, the Mobile Fidelity One Step starts to create some distance between the original pressing. Okay, I turned this up about five notches higher than I normally listen to. Not overly loud, but very, a nice volume, enough to have very good detail. The reason I believe that the vinyl, the quietness of the vinyl is huge, is because when you do turn it up and get up to the little bit higher volume, the noise floor remains quiet, where, as on the original pressing, while it's not bad, it's good, and the recording, I think, on the, on the original pressing is stellar. They did a great job with this album originally. It sounds really good. And during normal listening levels in my room and on my system, the differences between the original pressing and the one step are not huge. They're really, really not. But like I say, where the one step starts to separate itself and become much better is when the volume goes up. That's where I think it really starts to make a difference. And so I switch these back and forth with the volume up, not scientific. I'm not telling you that I put a, a an SPL meter on it to measure, you know, so that I knew that volumes were accurate. I didn't do any of that. I just listened to it to what I felt was pretty dang close, and I'm sure that it was pretty dang close in volume, and that's where the Mobile Fidelity One Step really started to shine, is when that volume went up. So if you listen to your music quite loud, you know, this definitely starts to be uh, a, a significantly better sounding version of the album. And I, and I am not, in no way, shape, or form, I want you all to know, I am not saying that this is bad, because it is not. In fact, if you're not interested, and maybe you, this isn't your favorite album by the Eagles, or maybe the Eagles isn't your favorite band, but you do like a song or two on the album, you know, I'd probably tell you to search out and find you a nice used uh, original pressing. They don't go for very much, uh, and they sound really, really... My copy is incredibly awesome. It sounds great. Uh, the original pressing. I, I do believe that the one step does sound better than that one, but not by significant margin. Even when the volume gets turned up, that's where this album starts to really shine uh, and sound better than, than the original pressing. And as indicated, these albums, in my opinion, behind me, these first five, I thought sounded quite a bit better from their original uh, pressings that I have. I thought they were significantly, for the most part, significantly better. Not the case with this one, but better. I think Mobile Fidelity did a very nice job with this. It sounds good. It really does. It's clean. It's quiet. Once again, Mobile Fidelity Super Vinyl, I think, and of course, the 45 RPM uh, speed is really the the tale here. This is really what makes this album album shine. And really, to be honest with you, Mobile Fidelity, in my opinion, has done really good with these one steps as of recent recently. Uh, the reason I say that is back in the day, back in years gone by, I think Mobile Fidelity really tried to emphasize certain aspects of the of, of, of the spectrum of music, in particular in that bottom end. I don't think they're doing that now. The, at least I don't believe they did that here. I was expecting to hear a significant difference in the bottom end. And while there was a difference in the bottom end to a small degree uh, on the Mobile Fidelity One Step, uh, it, it wasn't in weight. It was in definition. 
and how the drums, you could actually hear the snare, the, the, the hit of the drum. It was more defined in, def, in, in, in definition than it was in overall weight. And so I think that's really something that Mobile Fidelity has done. And I think they've done well. I'm actually happy uh, with the Eagles, the long run, Mobile Fidelity One Step. It completes my set of six. I'm glad I bought it. If you're not, uh, this is just my recommendation and you know, everybody does what they need to do, right? But for $125, which is a pretty hefty price to pay for a, a, a Mobile Fidelity One Step, if you're not a huge Eagles fan and it's not important to you to have this entire collection, some of us like to collect, some of us love the sound of the music and want the very best uh, sound we can get from the albums that we love and that we that we enjoy, then you know what? If, if it's not that big of a deal to you, hey, an original pressing sounds great. It sounds absolutely phenomenal. The, dis the differences between the one step and the original pressing on this album the long run is minor. It's not huge. It, it really isn't. Only when that volume starts to creep up, and I too like to listen to my music a little louder than normal, uh, but I, I think that's really where the one step really emphasizes itself and is much better. I did compare briefly the Mobile Fidelity SACD CD of the Eagles The Long Run. It, it sounds very, very nice. It's a good option for $30. It in no way compares to the original pressing and it in no way compares to the one step uh, version of the album, but it's not a bad route to go if you've got a nice CD, SACD player. It does sound very, very good. That really concludes my review of Mobile Fidelity's Eagles The Long Run. I think they've done a nice job with this album. I think they've done a nice job with the entire collection of the Eagle Six Studio albums, which this uh, is the last of. Just was a little shocked, and that's why I kind of took a little bit longer with this review. I was kind of expecting and thinking that I was going to be hearing similar differences as I did on the first five, but it really wasn't to be. Uh, it is better than the original pressing, but not by much. Once again, the Super Vinyl is probably the main reason, along with the 45 RPM speed. Uh, quiet noise floor as the volume gets turned up on the one step. That's where the separation, where this becomes a little bit better, uh, in my own opinion, than the original pressing. If you're an owner of the original pressings, hey, you don't have $125 or want to spend $125 on the one step, your original pressing's gonna sound wonderful. Mine does. I was actually thoroughly shocked at how well the original pressing sounded. But anyway, um, thank you so much for watching today. Upcoming videos. Uh, got a, a shipment coming from Mike down at the In Groove. We've got uh, the new Anthony Wilson album from Coherent Records should be here tomorrow. Uh, I've just barely received the new uh, Rhino latest high fidelity releases, the Cars, Candy O, and the Grateful Dead. I just got those albums, just barely got them. Going to be looking at those too. Uh, so anyway, if you, if you like what you see, please go ahead and subscribe. But as always, put your comments in the comment section below. Let me know what you think. Uh, of the long run. Have you bought the one step? If you have, what do you think about it? Are you comparing it to an original pressing or some other pressing that there, that you might have? Uh, let me know what you think. I appreciate you so very much. Thank you once again for tuning in and watching today. Leave comments in this comment section below. Thank you so much and have a great day.